Hello, Blenders, and welcome. Welcome to episode number 290. Oh, what a nice round number. 290 of Real Blend, a podcast that will begin with a spin. Traveling in the world of my creation, what we'll see will defy explanation. I now have a new least favorite Wonka. <laughs> Damn it. Come on now. That's How many good. listeners just turned off our show? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not enough, to be honest with you. Uh, my name is Sean O'Connell. I'm the managing editor at Cinema Blend and a co-host of the Real Blend podcast. And on this week's show, the Oscar race shifts into another gear uh, with a couple of regional and national awards groups nominating, including Golden Globes. Um, Wonka hits theaters. And then we're going to play a very fun game since all of us are together. Uh, called this or that top five edition and we're we're doing it for real this time because jake is actually going to join us and not miss out for kurt russell oh and i was just Wyatt gonna say what russell. was i doing last week yeah that's yeah, right you were doing monarch uh i'll start with jake hamilton when i introduce the guys uh jake hamilton of fox 32 in chicago hello sir how are you doing well don't forget don't forget our honorary i had the uh, roblin pup in the background oh look how sweet look she is there look see now that's a reason to watch it on youtube yeah uh, exactly it, in the other chairs, Kevin McCarthy from Fox 5 in Washington, D.C. Kev, how are you, sir? Good to see you, Sean, Jacob, Gabriel. I'm actually really excited. I'm watching uh, Michael Mann's Ferrari tonight. Which oh, I'm, I'm also um, watching it. Oh, do you want to have a Ferrari date? I'm dude. I'm so excited. I, mean, I was I was I was driving home from work just now. I was thinking I was like, there's a new Michael Mann movie that's coming out this year. Yeah. And I can't wait to see it. And um, uh, so. can we can we say if it happens, we're talking to him tomorrow? If it happens, hashtag well, if it happens. Well, not don't, mis- don't mislead people. Not, not us. Not let me rephrase. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking to him. Kevin's talking to him. Sean's talking to him. <laughs> yeah. But we're all doing it separately. Yes. If, I, if you guys send me all your footage, I can stitch together 12 <laughs> minutes of an interview. <laughs> Michael Mann's like, wait, I didn't agree to this. <laughs> I'm not on that crap You guys show. each, your last question leads into the next yeah. question. <laughs> <laughs> we work out our TV <laughs> slots where I'm like, beautiful. Kev, how about you? <laughs> Michael Mann's like, what? <laughs> what, the hell? what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> These guys are weird. <laughs> uh, if you're watching us on YouTube so that you can see uh, Jake's dog. And Kevin's She's not there media. Oh, yeah. She left. Heck? Even she got bored. <laughs> she, <laughs> she heard my singing. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us on, on YouTube. Hello. Good morning. It might be Friday by the time you're listening to this. It could be any day by the time you're listening to this. Um, if you're on the YouTube channel, please go down and hit subscribe. Turn on your notifications. Uh, continue to share the show with friends. We really appreciate what you guys are doing to help the show grow. Um, it's been really fun to see... Uh, Past episodes, like when we had Sam Esmail on to talk, leave the world behind. And then once that film made it to Netflix, uh, that got a little surge in viewers and a lot of comments underneath. So we really appreciate that. Of course, if you don't want to watch our uh, our podcast, we're available all different places. Your audio needs are met. And we appreciate you listening to the show that way as well, too. And if you've signed up for Real Blend Premium this week, you're going to get a newsletter from me. And you also get an ad free version of the show. You can check the description for information on where to sign sign up we're bringing this year to a close guys um we're essentially i don't know about well you guys both mentioned you're watching ferrari tonight uh that is for a junk and i watch color purple today um it just feels like the push is in you know it's like december trying to slam in as many titles as we can um, what are the big movies you have you guys have left that just for top 10 purposes uh still you haven't seen maestro watch? I saw oh, yeah? I, okay i have to see maestro i okay. have to see i really want to watch anatomy of a fall um uh, zone of interest i haven't I have seen zone, zone of interest, interest yet did you see you you did see anatomy of a fall correct i did yes i saw it in toronto yeah. what, what else terrific. do i have you i want to see it. um that new bayona movie that's on netflix oh society of the snow yeah did you see that no i have not yet and i like yeah, bayona I feel, a lot yeah i do too i feel like that again that, that, that kind of goes back to our um conversation about netflix that like I feel like I just sort of looked up and I was like, wait, I'm sorry, what? There's a new Bayona movie that's out and I'm, yeah. I'm just sort of casually hearing about it in passing. Like, how is that? How is that a thing? How is that real life? Yeah. I know Daenerys. I know. It shocked me, too. Do yeah, you have any that are lingering that you have to get to? I mean, Ferrari is the main one. Uh, I do need to see Zone of Interest. Those those mm-hmm. are like the main two. Um, but I think I've seen the majority of things I need to for, for like voting purposes. Is, okay. There's been so many press junkets recently. It's just been watching so many things i think last week i i did 
I think 11 junkets, I think it was total. Um, and all of those, you know, had to be watched. And, and then, so it, it, there's just certain things that I haven't had, had physical time to actually get to. And it's funny. And like, people were like, well, that's all you do is watch movies. I'm like, no, 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 no. We, we, we also all, have lives. We, we, no, well, not even that, but like, it's, you know, a lot of, a lot of what we do is writing, producing, editing, sure. um, booking, watching, um, you know, the four minute interview you end up seeing on our YouTubes or social channels, um, is, is the product of the yeah. work that has been put into it. And I think a lot of people think, oh, we just drop into these four minute interviews and blah, blah, blah. We're on vacation when we go on these trips. No, it's it's a, it's a lot of work and, and no complaints. We all love what we do, um, but it is a lot uh, in a good way. And um, it's been a great year to be in a long form podcast like this because we've been able to really deep dive with these filmmakers. So thank you all for listening to our show. Jake, I, don't, I mentioned this to Kevin the other day. Do you run into this situation where, because it's happened to me with me today with Color Purple, which I was watching for awards consideration and top 10 consideration, but I found myself coming up with questions, even though I'm not doing any yeah. kind of press for it. And I was like, I can't just sit here and enjoy this. Like, it's it, fr it's frustrating. It never stops. Um, you know, for for not that anyone would have followed my whole journey, but there was a, a four year gap where I stopped doing junkets whenever I first moved to Chicago. And that was always kind of the worst thing is I would just go see a movie just as a fan on, on opening weekend, just like everybody else. And still the questions in my mind would be like, man, if I'd gotten him for this at the junket, I would have asked yeah. like it never it. You, I don't know if you ever turn off that switch. Uh, I'll we'll, tell you we'll, what was, we'll have questions for the doctor as he's unplugging us when we're four <laughs> years old. I'll tell you what was uh, most interesting is when you took that break, I was mistaken for you all the time. Like every time I come into the room, they'd be like, Jake, what? and I was like, no, it's it's I know it looks exactly like like him, but it's the, it's the better one. And then I would say uh, I have a comfortable fold out couch here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we all got a laugh out of that. <laughs> Mich Michelle's Slap in the background the going, knee. what the hell? <laughs> um, OK, so because of the state of the race, essentially right now, we uh, I'd take a drink. We started as an awards podcast. Hey, uh, it is still something that we pay close attention to. And this week in particular, we're not going a deep dive into the Golden Globes, because by the time you guys are listening to this show, that has been picked over uh, wholeheartedly. But. In terms of, uh, yes, the Globes, the New York Film Critics uh, Circle, the L.A. Film Critics Association, um, Boston came out. And uh, that guy, again, I saw that one tweet. That guy's got that tweet going uh, consistently. And so yeah. for 13 <laughs> the, years the straight, they called the town. The best film of the year. Sure. <laughs> Great bit. I hope that guy never forgets to post that tweet. Uh, Washington, uh, D.C. Film Critics Association <laughs> put out, I believe they went with Holdovers or American Fiction? It's what, the American with? Fiction. Uh, Washington, D.C. Washington, you with? guys did American Fiction, yeah. right? American, American Fiction. Fiction. I wonder what Kevin so, voted for. So we just figured we would throw out a couple of uh, things that are on the rise, things that are maybe tumbling as a result. And, it, you know, obviously we talk about all the time when we're t discussing the Oscar race, none of these people vote <laughs> for Oscars. But what you're looking for is momentum. You're looking for things that are that are generating false heat uh, or not getting the, the bank that they uh, thought they might be able to get and parlay it into an awards campaign. We understand that most of this is... Um, is uh what do you call that like um smoke and mirrors yeah. thank you that was was a phrase i was going <laughs> you're for. welcome uh marketing dollar driven smoke and mirrors but people are trying to launch campaigns and um so one that i thought was was really on the rise lately because of the number of times that that she's been nominated or recognized by these groups is divine uh, joy randolph who every time i look at a supporting actress category from whatever group it is uh she's being recognized <clears throat> so i i feel like she's positioning herself as a bit of a front runner or without question going to get a nomination. Um, and I think that's great. I mean, she, she got recognized right by the so. LA critics, Boston, she got recognized by DC. And I just kind of expected that momentum to continue. I mentioned to you guys in the thread too. I, I know we're all Oppenheimer, you know, and like, I don't doubt that that's going to get nominated for a lot of different things, but, but we always sort of talk about like, you don't want to be the leader early, you know, because then you're just constantly being, questioned like why are you the front runner or what is better than you and if oppenheimer is one of the front runners now i think the holdovers is one of those films that could become the next one with that that rises up a bit because i also do feel like that's getting a lot of love from a lot of different critics not necessarily saying it's going to overtake it but i'm just saying it has a lot of the same narrative pieces of alexander payne's never had a best picture winner 
Um, he, he, he's won for screenplays. He won for screenplay won. for uh, twice, I think. Yeah, Election and Side, Descendants. Sideways. I was going to oh, say oh, sideways, sideways, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Sideways and Descendants. So that was a uh, that's one of the rises. Jake, you had a rise. Yeah, um, I'm going to say past lives. And the reason I'm saying past lives is on the rise is that there's sort of been this battle back and forth on quote unquote film Twitter, which I don't consider myself uh, in, in the cool kids table by by in, you know, in that regard. But there either. N- no one does. Um, <laughs> but there's been this conversation. You're especially, I think, asked not to join. Not to sit <laughs> at the can't sit here. Um, yeah, there, there's been this conversation about is past lives just beloved in, you know, amongst film Twitter? Is it going to translate over? And I feel like Celine Song getting the uh, Best Director nomination, get, uh, the film getting a Lead Actress nomination, the film getting uh, obviously a Best Picture nomination, sort of shows that people. People are watching slash have watched this movie and that they love it. I don't think it's it's no longer just, uh, you know, a film Twitter darling that they're going to champion that will be forgotten come Oscar season. I think it is yeah. very much solidified itself as a contender in this Oscar race. So that is why I'm choosing um, past lives uh, uh, to be on to be on the rise. Can what I find have- really what I find really interesting about past lives. Um, so it's interesting throughout the year. We watch a lot of films, uh, as I mentioned, um, and there are certain ones that when you see them, you know, you're watching something extremely special, um, whether or not that film will end up becoming an Oscar favorite or whatever is something that I, I you know, is up to chance. Right. Or or campaigning. Um, but I remember seeing past lives. I think I did the press junket for it in May. And Greta Lee, who, who got nominated, who's incredible in the film. Um, I just remember watching it and knowing that what I was watching was something that I had never seen before. It was very special. It felt magical. Um, and then when I found out it was a first time filmmaker and then had the, having the chance to interview with Celine Song and, and the entire cast, it was there was something about the magic of the way the cast spoke about the film, the way Celine spoke about the film, the way she spoke about shooting on 35 and um, just the 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 way she uses the camera to pull you in and out of that film. I just knew something was special. And I and I hoped that in the end of the year, when Oscar season started to be talked about, that it would remain in that conversation. Um, so I agree with Jake. I, I, I was very happy to see that the film is now within this conversation. And I do think like my mom and dad watched it the other day um, and they were blown away by it. It's a, you know, a 95 minute movie, hour, 40 minute film that just is packed such a punch emotionally. Um, and I really think that the Academy and the voters and and filmmakers are really starting to really understand the power of this movie. And I think that we're going to start to see more conversations with Celine Song, more filmmakers talking about her movie. Um, so I'm really happy about that. Just to, to, to Sean's point about Dave Vine, um, that, that category is so fascinating with supporting actor, supporting actress, because I, there's so many realms and, 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 and ways that that can go. And Daniel Brooks, obviously, uh, her performance in The Color Purple is outstanding. And I know she's going to be considered a front runner. But I, I'm with Sean. I do feel the 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 holdovers rising. Um, that's a film that had a beautiful platform release that has been like going along. It's been holding really well at, at, the, at the box office. And I think there are a lot of people who are going to see it that normally don't go see, quote unquote, I wouldn't call it an independent film, but it's a smaller film, right? Mm-hmm. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's Focus Features and it, Focus Features is a great studio, but they were generally released, I, I would say, argue more art house type films, mm-hmm. films that aren't like giant blockbusters. Um, and I have friends in my newsroom who are just going to see the holdovers because they thought they thought it looked great um, and they're walking out blown away. And I do want to recommend people to listen to our interview with Alexander Payne. Uh, if you like his work, it's basically like watching one of his movies is when you talk to him. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, this is a very interesting award season. And I think both your picks are, are fascinating. I really want to ask you. Oh, I'm sorry, I, w- I want to ask you a question about past lives. Um, yeah. You have said in the text a couple of times how badly you want um the director to receive a nomination yeah today december 12th believe yeah. me i know it's super early do you think it's going to happen it, it's interesting I, I i worry okay so that category obviously the locks are nolan right um greta, greta is, yeah and then who else scorsese? is scorsese scorsese i think scorsese's alexander locked. payne is I payne locked payne. Thing. I'm not sure about Payne. I think, I think Yorgos in. is. Oh <laughs> no! Oh no! <laughs> yes! No! Jake, finally! Jake, do no. this, please. 
Oh, come on. Oh, no. Okay. No! Right, if there are people listening on audio, uh, I've, <laughs> I've been having a problem uh, with my Zoom where <laughs> gestures were coming up on the screen like balloons and thumbs up. And Jake just had that happen. Um, I, I, I do. I do. I, and I think to Jake's point, I think the rise of that film by the time the nominations come out, I think Celine's song is going to be more in the conversation. Okay. We've seen filmmakers who made movies end up in the best directing category for films we never even heard of. Didn't that happen sure. a couple years ago with um, the filmmaker it who was made the Mads um, Mickelson film? Right. Um, and not not just an, another year or another. Um, it was something like uh, that. Yes. But regardless, the point I'm making is I'm not saying that movie wasn't wasn't on our radar. Or people didn't know about it, but it was shocking when that director got a nomination. We didn't yeah, yeah. expect it when the nominations yeah. came out. I think Celine's song and if A24 is is which they are very smart at campaigning so okay so here's the interesting thing what is a24's oscar film is it past lives i think or so. does it, do they have another one is it iron claw i don't think iron mm. claw is going to be the play that uh they want it to be i think it's past and, and lives the reason i asked this question is because a24 won the oscar for everything everywhere all at once right yeah, and, and yeah when you when you campaign a film you generally kind of latch onto one gigantic one right and i think you want to push that Past Lives wasn't a huge box office film, but it is seems like it's doing well at home mm -hmm. um, to the point where my parents paid to rent it or paid to buy it, whatever they did. My point is, is that I do they then take that on as their front runner? Like has a 24. Do you think they've made the decision? Like, OK, this is our this is our film. I mean, this that's what Netflix our, does. I mean, Netflix right. kind of starts the season with five or six and then right. clearly chooses like what's Maestro. their baby and what's not. Yeah. I mean, you know, so they, they, so they, they, you Maestro know, is poor, poor the killer is left on the cutting room floor. Right. So Maestro is Netflix. Warner Brothers is color purple. No, I think Universe. Warner Brothers is Barbie. And color purple. Well, yeah. But if you if they had to pick one. Oppenheimer is for Universal. Mm -hmm. Paramount. Do they have a big one? I don't think they have an Oscar film. Mission would have been yeah, like, yeah, I guess, the below the reckoning. line. Yeah, and then so you focus features is holdovers. Poor things and, and yeah. poor, poor things, things is searchlight. Is searchlight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you look at every major studio, you can kind of start to figure out what those front runners are going to be. Warner Brothers obviously has two, and they're a big enough studio to handle two. Obviously, it's sure. multiple teams run those publicity teams. Yeah. I don't think Color Purple I, not getting a, glo a globe is shocking to me. Okay, that blew my mind this morning, and we're and then we'll, let's transition to what we f see falling. It's like in, cooling in, off a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so. Color Purple, I do think, is going to have a strong Oscar uh, 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 potential. I think it's going to mm. be huge. I think Fantasia is going to get nominated for leading actors. I do think it'll get a Best Picture nomination. Um, it'll definitely get a lot of the below the line uh, in terms of costuming and production design, things like that. You I know, do strangely, Daniel, we Daniel, could help it. CCA could really help it. But Daniel Brooks will, will get in. So my point is, is that like I, this is one of those situations where, and we were all texting this morning about this, we were all shocked out of out of every movie to miss the best musical comedy category, musical specifically, for the color purple to miss that makes absolutely no sense. No. Um, I, I'm very confused by it. Um, you know, there's a lot of films in there, American Fiction and May December, which I would argue, while you know, American Fiction may be comedy, but there's a lot of drama in that film. I, I well, never understand those those divisions, but I, I do find it. it yeah. But I think a lot of times it comes down to like what happens with the Hollywood Foreign Press Association and what movies they're shown and, mm. you know, what what but is shown, shown in time. Uh, but I think I think a big part yeah. of it, too, is I think Color Purple could be the victim of it's a movie that a lot of people really like. But do enough people love it? Because keep in mind, I, don't, I, I can't speak for how they nominate, but a little, I'm going to peek behind the curtain for a little bit. For our Critics' Choice Association nominations, we pick our top five films for Best Picture, mm -hmm. and then all other categories, we pick top three. Three, yeah. So, you know, it's not to say, you know, every member of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association could have Color Purple on their top 10 list. But if it ranks somewhere between six and 10, then not that many people are writing yeah. it down. Possibly. Right. Um, and, it's, and, that's what they say. It's more important that a handful of people love you than everybody like you. Color Purple, I don't think it's falling, but that was a shock that that wasn't nominated. Jake, what's your question? I'm going to throw out a different type of falling to see okay. how you guys feel about it, because the the falling that I'm going to throw out, I still think has the best chance to win. But I feel like uh, public perception has changed a little over seven days and I'm going to throw out Bradley Cooper. And what I mean by that is there's been this really interesting 
turn against him, I feel like, at least online. And again, we keep throwing out film Twitter and how it's, it's a bubble. But I mean, look, and I'm not knocking because like there's nothing wrong with wanting to win an Oscar. Like we there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But he is the person this year who most clearly wants it and is doing everything in his power to be the kind of likable guy that that they want. I'm just sort of curious. Have you guys seen that conversation uh, and and the potential of that backfiring? Um, well, I haven't well, seen the. Go ahead. I, I haven't seen the conversation yet. I haven't seen that come up yet. This week in particular, and the and uh, the, the last two weeks prior, seem to have been really inundated with the variety actor on actor, sure. and every single day they're generating a lot of headlines out of those conversations. And so I know that he and Emma a stone had a chance to you know to have their time together kev you were calling those earlier you know they're they're geared towards oscar you know buzz they're geared towards generating conversation and i do think some are more successful than others i think Mm. the anne hathaway emily blunt one the two of them came off great you know they they had a they have a rich history together with devil wears prada um they clearly have a, a friendship you know and a lot of memories the vibe in the Emma Stone Bradley Cooper one was really weird. Hey, how you dare you? It. They have Aloha. Yeah, <laughs> yes, they Cameron do. Crow, classic. Am I, am I wrong in that? Did you guys not get the sense well, that I the two of them were just I think, weird? I think that was sort of the the base and the beginning of the like, oh these, and also and a little bit Emma, but like Bradley really really wants this. Yeah. Well, oh, hold on. So I didn't realize this until the other day. Bradley Cooper's been nominated nine times. Is that well, right? keep it, some of them are directing some of them are writing some of them are best picture not not nine best actor i think he's got five acting nominations that's a, but, lot. But that's also, a lot i never guessed that of, well also producer right wasn't he on he produced joker right uh, but okay but here's the thing of of, of all the people yeah, like if, if we're going to talk about like people who like are you want to throw the overdue narrative to like there are a lot more deserving people than bradley cooper you got to talk about I, i'm sorry paul giamatti <laughs> well, is much more willem dafoe uh, annette benning all people who far more should be much, far further in in the race if we're going to throw out the all oh, they're they're deserving that's i mean i'm sorry bradley bradley cooper has not is not old enough to be in the like oh he deserves to have it by now uh he has been nominated nine times wow Uh, wow but but here's how it goes best motion best motion picture for nightmare alley best motion picture for joker best motion picture for a star i didn't realize he was a producer on joker wow oh Yeah. yeah Yeah, he was at the boy. carpet. Todd he was at the carpet. Yeah. I know Todd Phillips, but I didn't know. Um, but, he, but he weirdly didn't produce the second one. He did huh. produce the first one. Yeah, he hates um, money. <laughs> so that's three. He got two more for A Star Is Born, uh, for adapted screenplay and performance. Then he got best motion picture for American Sniper as well as performance. Yeah. Then he got best performance for or best sorry best supporting actor for uh, American Hustle, and then wow. best performance for Silver Linings. I will say this. I a lot I, of best pictures was my point. Killian's going to win this. Regardless. Do you think so? I, I, I think right, 100%. right now, if I if, if someone gave me a million dollars cash and said you got to put it on somebody, I would put the money on Cooper. Here's why I'm putting it on Killian. Well, one, I think so. Cooper, this comes down to campaigning, and I think this is a very interesting topic. And and we all know that it comes down to the campaign, how things are done, mixed in with how good the performance is. The cast of Oppenheimer has been everywhere recently. They've literally been at like every <laughs> Academy screening, Q&A's, and every single one of those actors, think about the size of that cast, talks, and I know it's their movie, but the way they talk about Killian Murphy in this movie, it, it, it's a very special way they speak about him. And we're talking about a lot of people that work in that film, from Downey to Emily to, you know, all the incredible cast. I Maestro... Yes, I do think Cooper is a front runner, but there's the cast isn't as big, clearly. And I haven't seen as many events that they've been doing as Oppenheimer. Now, that could be a film Twitter thing. That could be what's in my algorithm. Sure. Um, But I do think there's a lot to be said about the number of people that are behind Killian to win this Oscar, as does Cooper. And I want to say this Cooper's performance in Maestro is probably the best of his career. 
and I would have no problem with him winning. And this is somebody who loves Oppenheimer. Um, I don't it's not that I sit here and I'm begging for Killian to win. I, I think Cooper deserves a chance as well. I would I just, take Giamatti before. You guys Cooper. are sleeping on Giamatti. Yeah, See, you're Gia, sleeping on Giamatti. I, I think Giamatti Gia could make a, a last minute surge. I, and that's where I, that's where I'm. I'm okay. If I had to put a million dollars down right now, really? is where I'm putting it. Yeah. I, am. I don't oh, think okay, so. We got to weigh in. Okay, we got we got one million on Giamatti, one million on Cooper, and and Kevin's hypothetical million. Because on I hate. Well, and let me just say one thing. Let me say one reason why you gave, and then I'm really sorry. I think a lot of people are going to assume that Killian Murphy and Bradley Cooper will have other opportunities. I'm not quite sure that that Giamatti is going to have as many. Mm, as interesting. Remember, Killian's been in the business for. 25 plus years or whatever how it's been i don't want to i don't i, I want to make sure i want to make sure like that's the thing is like just because he's now become a bigger name because of this movie obviously peaky blinders is big for him clearly we've been Huge. watching him we've been watching him for years man like Dan, danny boyles 28 days later like sunshine i mean right. i i, I yeah, giamatti's you know, been in it just as long if not longer I, I agree so my point is is that like it's not like killing is some fresh She's face who's just coming in here and 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 you know taking the 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 stardom away no, from no, giamatti no, what, I'm what i'm arguing in this sense is that killian can use oppenheimer as a platform to more roles I'm not saying that Giamatti is going to necessarily use uh, the holdovers as a way to kick the door open for plenty more roles. But I think you'll see like, Killian and more stuff. And the reason I would agree with that is and I love Giamatti, but like for every sideways or Cinderella man or the holdovers that we get, he also like the man also pays bills. The man also, you know, he's he's great in everything, but he also like does Jungle Cruise and does, you know, <laughs> does, you know, it's it, yeah, like, yeah. Look, look, we all, you know, we all got to pay for our Malibu for mansions. Sure. He, was, so he was in Jungle Cruise. He was in Jungle I can't Cruise. I place him in Jungle Cruise. He's been in uh, two different. There's the a number Rock of films, films when G and listen, when Giamatti shows Thunder up, Pants. I'm always like, this is going to get better. You know, like this is yeah. instantly yeah. better yeah. now. Why but, are y'all sleeping on right. Thunderpants? That's like, that, 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 that's that's his that's his crowning achievement. I don't even know what that is. No pun intended. <laughs> I love, uh, what's it? Big Fat Liar? I love, like, before I even knew who Paul Giamatti yeah. was, I was like, this is great. It's a classic. It's a classic. Right, Gabe, classic. Where are you, Gabe, Gabe where are if you have a million dollars, where are you putting it? Well, I was going like to say, instead new, of weigh in, if you guys have a million dollars, can I borrow $100,000? Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we have a million um, dollars. We're throwing it away on Oscar bets, Gabe. Okay, sorry. Your question is, you're asking me to weigh in on the three On Cooper. the best actor. No, no, just on on, on the th anyone in, in best actor. Yeah, you could say Leo. It would be all the more interesting if you had somebody else yeah that's oh, true coleman domingo I, I haven't seen maestro and i was just saying i haven't seen holdovers yet i need to catch up on it. but i totally understand the the giamatti i mean i understand what giamatti's bringing to the table and um and i've heard nothing but great things about that uh my number one going into it was definitely killian uh since the summer but like i said without seeing i haven't seen maestro yet i, I don't have a screener for that so I would say Killian, but that's all I can say as far as what I've actually seen performed. I think you guys are right, though, from conversation that I'm seeing is that Giamatti feels like the Oscar coming at the after after so many years in the race and finally getting something. Who's and the you, number one right now on like on, on gold, like gold Derby? It's gotta yeah, be who? Cooper. It's gotta be Cooper. Uh, it's very close with a uh, four to one odds. Bradley Cooper. And then 3.7 to 1 odds is Killian Murphy. So they have Killian Murphy above. It's kind of weird the way they do it because it says 37 out of 10 versus 4 out of 1. Um, so they're like where's, neck and neck. Where's Giamatti? Right yeah, right underneath there? it, 5 to 1. Interesting. Mm. That's a really interesting race. And this, and, and I know we have to, we're going to break here and switch topics, but the actress category also gets very interesting too Oof. because oh, those, are, those are, those are, those are Stone and Gladstone. Game. I was going to say, oh. I was going to say, yeah, Stone I was going to say, don't, don't say, was, okay, all right, go ahead. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, well, no, I, I wanted to guess it, but yeah. What do you want to guess? No, I was just going to guess. I was going to guess that Stone was the number one, and, and then I was Gladstone. I was wondering if she was a two. Yeah. Well, it's, it's 3.7 to 1 to 3.9 to 1. Jeez. So it's it's very close. But, but I, think I feel like Glad Lily's been uh, kind of taking the Total edge. Back. Why? Glad People have been saying that she's critiquing the movie in her interviews. Is she critiquing the movie? Well, so to, to, to for that clarification, there was a lot of conversation surrounding the film about the point of view of the movie. Right. Yeah. And so the yeah. point of view being that we're being told the story through DiCaprio's perspective. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a gentleman who did an incredible interview on the red carpet for Killers of the Thought of the Moon during the premiere who gave his, his very honest opinion about the, the film's perspective. And and he quote, he commented on the negative aspects and the positive aspects. I saw of the that movie. guy's interview. Yeah, I thought that and was I, great. 
I he think a, was that, he a producer or just like a consultant? What was? I think he, he was, he was involved cons- with the film, right? I think he was a I, consultant of some sort. Okay. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing that up is because that then has bled into interviews. Even when I was interviewing the cast of Killers of the Flower Moon, um, uh, they were bringing up that that comment on the red oh, no carpet. Kidding, really? So I think what you're referring to is Lily's probably just joining the conversation about the perspective and, and and which I think is a really honest and really great way to to dive into that topic. I mean, even sure. the person being in the movie, having conversations about the perspective that the film took, I think that's a really great thing that she's doing. It, it's not like she's like slamming the film. She's just talking about the conversation around it, you know? Interesting. Yeah. She's going to be talking about it for months to come, unfortunately, because the show is not until March. So we got a long way to go uh, and a long way to go in this show still. So let's throw it to a really quick break. And on the other side, we're going to review Wonka and then play a really fun game called This or That. And we are back. Okay, so uh, Timothy Chalamet is reviving the character of Willy Wonka in a film directed by Paul King, who did uh, two tremendous films in Paddington and Paddington 2. Um, I'm going to go first on this one, but this isn't a uh, we're all going to go one at a time. I want this to become just sort of a free for all conversation Um, because I hated this movie. (laughs) Like with every fiber of my being wow. um, from the opening moment, I thought it was incredibly hokey <laughs> and, and a really bad decision. Like at its core, I found it to be a bad decision. Um, and Kev, you brought up the CGI in that opening shot of him on the, the mast of the boat. Yeah. Um, and I don't think the CGI improved throughout it. Like I, I thought it never looked good. Um, to the point where I turned to Michelle at one point and I was like, are we watching like a work print? Like what is happening with this? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's the origin of Willy Wonka essentially, which, and, and personally as the old man, get off my lawn, I don't, I'm sick and tired of the origin of fill in the blank. Like I don't need the origin of every character explained, but you realize that every episode we tell people about our origin story, right? Yeah. (laughs) And no one cares. (laughs) They hear it. they, They tune out. Um, but but the way that it presents his origin doesn't make any sense. It doesn't lead into um, see, I guess I'm confused if this is supposed to be a prequel to the to the Gene Wilder one or not connected to it at all. Um, well, he says it's pure imagination. Yeah. So sometimes I felt like it was it was trying to pass the baton to that one. Yeah. But then I never understood but, once. But how- clearly a lot of things happen because the the Chalamet Wonka that we meet is still, even by the end of the film, a very different man than the Gene Wilder who walks out of that chocolate factory and does the fake tumble. So there's no difference between like the Hunger Games prequel and Snow being like a different person. And then 64 years later, the snow that Sutherland plays. It's like there's so much time in between. But but the 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 point I'm making is that like when you have a younger version of a character and then we already know the older performance, that this doesn't lead into Wilder. There's Sean a watched of episode of one and was like, that little boy couldn't even fit in Darth Vader's costume. <laughs> 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 Although I do love see that they use the shadow in the poster. Yeah, that's and what I was that's, like, that's oh, see? Probably my that's second how favorite he's poster go ever. Okay, but here's the other thing. First and foremost, the songs in this musical suck. No, they, they don't. Suck. No, they're they're don't, so bad. Sean. They really, they're not. They're not great, but... So, and some are better than others, but like they're catchy and like they're OK. Everything about this movie is good enough. It's it's like the songs are what good a enough. rousing endorsement. <laughs> like I, I it's I thought it was I, you know, just to sort of like kind of veer this in a different direction. I thought it was a perfectly fine movie. And there were some moments where I actually found myself enjoying it and tapping. I, it's, I, I, I feel like it's that situation where like I'm seeing, you know, it's like the like the, the, the schoolyard playground and I'm seeing like a bully pick on like a, a fourth grader. And like, I don't particularly care much about the fourth grader, but I feel like it's wrong that the bully's picking on him. So I got to step in like I like I'm not like all over the moon oh my god wonka's on my top 10 list but like it's a perfectly fine like like toothless enjoyable movie that i i i would argue i can't imagine anyone hating but oh but i hated it how is that possible possible? have you met sean o'connell how how do you hate this movie like look if you said look i don't like it it wasn't for me i I, you know but you you actively hate it yeah well i the 
without giving away too much of it, and this is pretty early on, there's a driving story point where Willie gets sold into indentured servitude. As one where does. He essentially has to be, um, he, he works for uh, these these two people who apparently make it a thing where they con people into signing these extremely long contracts to then have to work for them for decades. And this couple has tricked multiple people uh, to put them into their basement laundry uh, room where they're forced to scrub, scrub these clothes as, as they put them together, which leads like to that song. a dreadful musical. Oh, number. Come on, Kevin, like back that. me up. Scrub scrub scrub, really scrub, 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 which is the I, laziest bit of songwriting I could ever hear of. I like scrub, the, scrub. Then I, I just can't. I don't even fault Chalamet. I think Chalamet is trying to do something right. I don't. But the film can't decide whether he is because Gene Wilder has this menace to his whimsy, right? Like the undercurrent of all that is that he doesn't really like the kids because right. he thinks the kids been, are his, awful. His light's been dimmed. I mean, that, that's the whole point of this movie is that we're we're meeting him where before the world has 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 darkened his heart, in my okay. opinion. And I'm, I'm not saying that Gene Wilder's character has a dark heart, but there is a darkness, a certain darkness to that character. Sure. Uh, yeah. And a more, more of a more of a like a dimmed. Yeah. I, I keep seeing this. I, I this feel word. like you, sh- yeah. you should be left with a little bit of a question of like, OK, so then how, what how does he get there? To, uh, yeah. What what happens? Maybe to, I because want like, movie because he's, he's still he's still so like authentically genuine by the time that it's not a spoiler alert, uh, but he's still so authentically genuine by the time the movie ends that something had to happen to him between Wonka and Willy Wonka, the chocolate factory to like, just make him be so over children. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't work for me at all in, in the least little bit. Um, I didn't like the story about them having to go against the three other candy people. Um, Kev, where do you fall on it? Are you? Um, I, I think okay, you're leaning so, on Jake's side. Well, no, I I, I like the film. Um, so uh, I do want to comment on a couple things. Um, we talked about this in the text thread. So I do believe that the CGI in the film doesn't work. Um, luckily, there are enough sequences where we are in like physical sets. Uh, Nathan Crawley, who did the production design for this film, he did Interstellar. He's genius. Um, so when the physical sets hit, the movie just feels completely different when they're in these heavy CG sequences, like with the chocolate being CG or like the the sequence you're talking about with the beginning with the boat. Um, those were obvious problems from a visual perspective, but I gotta say like it's Chalamet's performance. It's all in his eyes, man. I, I like, I was so blown away by what he did with the character, just from a, from a performance perspective, take away the CG, take away the, the, the craziness of the story or anything that might not land. Well, he, he is him. And there's like these like magical moments where he tilts his head or he says something a certain way. And it's funny, I brought this up in my interview with him because I, I I asked him the exact same question that I asked Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer, which weirdly was like a similar question, but it made perfect sense. Oppenheimer has a think about the Oppenheimer outfit, right? It's the hat. It's the jacket. You know, uh, it's the, it, for him. It's the pipe or, you know, and so with Wonka, it's the jacket, it's the hat and the cane. And I remember asking Killian about how those helped him find the character. And I was like, why don't I ask uh, Shalomay the same question? And one thing that's cool about this movie, um, and I, I need to go back and watch the original. It's been a long time. Did Wilder hang up his suit or his outfit the way the Chalamet does in the movie? You know, he, you know, he, he would put it on like a, a I little think he stick. does. Put, I think he does. His cane does stand up on its own. And then so I believe cool. he puts his hat on it um, in in the Wilder version? Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure. I haven't seen right, it in a really long time, but I seem I to, to remember go back that. And watch it. But I so I just want to give Chalamet credit here. I, I wait, I, what did Chalamet say to you when you asked him? Oh, he just he just talked about the 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 the, the suit itself and how there were like little pockets and things you could pull out of and like um like the he said that the the ends of the jacket were like singed and he wanted it like itself like almost the jacket itself became a character. Mm-hmm. Uh very similar to kind of how the pipe and the hat are a character for Killian. Um and I I, I just found it really interesting to kind of hear his intricate thoughts about how he finds people. Um, I have to say, I, I think Chalamet and someone said this a few years ago, and I think it's completely true. He's like the, he's the DiCaprio of this generation. The kid is an incredible actor. Um, and ever since and here's why here's why I say that. I think he started at a young age. I think he actually has the talent 
to live up to and become that level of an actor. I already think he's showing it. Um, the ending of Call Me By Your Name, the one -er, as he's sitting at that fireplace, I think is one of the greatest performances I've seen from an actor in recent years. Um, Everything from now, obviously, Dune, Call Me By Your Name, Beautiful Boy. Um, he has Here's an incredible... Here's what I'll argue. Leo would never do Wonka. Uh, I mean, okay, then take Wonka out of the equation. What else wouldn't he do from his career? No, I'm saying he wouldn't do Wonka. I'm not taking it out. I'm saying I don't think Leo would have a comparable, like a maybe Blood Diamond, but, you know, as like a movie yeah, that just didn't work. For Blood Diamond. Did Those he really? Very, very different movies. They I, are very I, different I, movies. Yeah, I, I don't I'm, see Leo doing like an IP type movie, but... Let, let let us know in the comments. Do you, do you agree that Chalamet could be the DiCaprio of this generation? I really do believe it. I think he is incredibly talented. Uh, just look at his eyes. I'm telling you guys, look at the Dune. Look, at, look at every character he plays. There's something in his eyes that I find incredibly immersive, very interesting. And just I, I just latch on to everything he does. And if either of you have Wonka on your top 10, I'm ending the no, show. No, I'm not on my ending top 10. The show. The, pro, the, the, the thing is, it was just a light <laughs> enough just movie. Like slug word, slug words. Just yeah. like the guy in that. I don't movie. even know who that is. Have I really <laughs> just like that guy I, in the movie. I really enjoyed it. I really do think you guys or not Jake, but I, I think Sean, I think I you're sleeping, a, sleeping oh. a little bit on. No, no. How I'm good not. Chalamet I'm, is! I gotta be. I gotta say though, I miss. I, I do miss Grumpy Sean. I'm not saying Chalamet was the problem. I don't think that he's the problem. I think the script is awful. The script is awful. It's the kind of movie where it takes a really long time for them to figure out how to break out of the laundromat. Like as if that's a realistic problem for them to have. But then in the next bit, they're able to turn this convert the broken down, nasty old space into a glorious chocolate factory Sean, overnight. You know what you're doing right now, Sean? This is when I was growing up and this is I, I would sit next to a buddy of Being mine. And he was, no, he was so he would be so persnickety about mm -hmm. every little detail. We'd be watching a Fast and Furious film. He goes, cars can't do that. I'm like. Dude, it's a movie. You're bre you're you're breaking down the logic of of a guy who has chocolate flying around in the air and landing in people's hands. Like like it's it's I understand it's a, that. It's but you fantasy. have to be consistent. You either have to go fully into the fantasy or uh, find the right balance. And but I dude, I would argue I mean, this movie didn't find the right balance. To me, just this just feels like a Wonka movie directed by the guy who made Paddington. Like to me, yeah. it's 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 that's yeah, if you if you, if you went into an AI processor and typed in give me that's Wonka what, directed by the guy who made Paddington. That's what comes out. <laughs> it's as if a computer made it based on a couple there simple instructions. <laughs> also, it Sean. came out differently than I intended. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were right. You got it. Watch watch Paddington too. Instead of going to see Wonka, is my recommendation. Okay, here's what I say. I, I kind of want to just wrap up the Chalamet DiCaprio comparison. So I kind of did some math. Chalamet is 27 right now. Mm -hmm. By the time DiCaprio was 27, oh he was oh just about to take that that turn in his career. So he had just done The Beach, Titanic. He had already done Romeo and Juliet, Basketball Diaries, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, This Boy's Life. But mm -hmm. when he turned 28 is when he started doing Gangs of New York, Catch Me wow. If You Can, The Aviator, The Departed, Blood Diamond, Body of Lies, Revolutionary Road, Shutter Island, Inception, J. Wow. Edgar, mm. Django. So mm. this is the moment. And yeah. what my point being is this is the moment in Chalamet's career where he's going to go one direction or so two. So Villeneuve could be his Scorsese. I mean, dude, his Scorsese. Dune, two, Dune 2 is going to be so big and oh. so it looks incredible. Um, it's also not an IP style thing you're referring to a DiCaprio wouldn't take an IP thing on Dune is like a le like is legit film oh, Dune is cinematic. Yeah, no Dune is fine. Oh, I have a quick Dune, Dune question for you Dune guys. And, and this, this might be more for Gabe than anybody. If they make Messiah, do they call it, do you just call it Dune part three or do you call it Dune Messiah? Mes Messiah. Uh, I think you could get away with saying Dune part three, Messiah, but I think I kind of want you them just to call, call it, it part three just to make it a trilogy. I think you just call it Dune. I don't know. I would trust, Denis to make that call because I think he he like he his his approach to the story is so intimate and the way that yeah. he like even if you look at the way he broke up part one yeah um and part two is 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 effectively where the first book in Dune ends and so I think he I think he sees it as a very cohesive if you were to do part three sure. he sees that as a very cohesive story um he said the script's almost done 
Yeah, and just fans of the the books. And I'm not like a diehard fan that's like read every Dune book and, you know, I wasn't on forums 10 years ago talking about it. But from what I understand, the diehard uh, fans of the, the books kind of see the first Messiah and that as like the story that's and then Dune. everything else. Yeah, then everything else as a sequel kind of thing. Yeah. Um, mm. But I think at that point, it's just a, it's marketing. Like, like maybe you call it Dune Messiah. I don't think that there's in popular culture, Dune Messiah is a thing. I think Dune... Part one is yeah. the popular culture touchstone for people. Yeah. Um, so I could see them saying it doing part yeah. three. Well, because all, he, he's also said that, like, if I could wrap it up with a third one. So to me, this just very nice. I mean, Sean, you appreciate a nice round number like like it's it, it feels like, you know, have you ever um, this is going to be so, so, so nerdy um put to put like DVDs on a rack and like all like the first few in a series have the same spine. Yeah. And then like the fourth one all of a sudden has like a different spine and it drives me nuts. So if I could show you over here, <laughs> I can't, but over here the, to my side is the Blu-ray shelf. Yeah. And these, well, let me, let me at least try to grab this. <clears throat> While he's grabbing that, can I ask a stupid question? These, is Dune it. called Dune or Dune part one L- uh, title official? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just called Dune, but I think once the sequels come out, they, it will start being commonly referred to as a Dune Part One, like Dune Star Part Wars, two. Yeah. Back to the Future. Yeah. I have um, four of these Harry Potter, yeah, ones, but they're number three, four, five, and six. So for number one and two, I have two little skinny guys, <laughs> and then for um, seven, seven is the final one, right? I have yep. award screeners, so I have really skinny <laughs> Sean. <laughs> Why would mess. you buy the other ones and then not buy the last one? I didn't buy them. They got sent to me. Oh, guys, can so, I just say really quickly? This is so nerdy and inside baseball for anyone outside the city limits of Chicago. Azkaban, but um, uh, they just announced that Cursed Child is going on tour and Chicago is going to be the first stop. And I've heard nice. it's awesome and I'm dying Maybe to I'll... see it. But I'm really curious to uh, dude, come up. No. Uh, what I'm really curious about is like, isn't it six hours? Isn't it like part one, part two? Like Sean, really? Kevin, you saw it. It is. Long. I haven't seen it, but it's two parts. You have to, but you like, have how, to, how are the hell are they going to do that on tour? You leave, yeah. like you leave in the <laughs> middle of the day, and then you no, you do. You legitimately well, you watch. But like, but the how first are they? Gonna, they, they can't expect like the you know. Okay, you go to New York and like you make a day of it. And it's a thing, but like they're going on a on a national tour. They can't expect families. Well, do, you just, do you just cut your like the shows in half that you would do? Like you do I, no, a number of shows a day. Do you just do half of those and then one show? I think is, people. When they go I on tour, buying, they just do one show a night. Do they really? Oh, okay. People buying those tickets know it's two parts. But I don't know. Logistically, I mean, I, you know, like, so when, when Hamilton came to uh, Chicago for the first time on tour, it was like, it was sold out every night. And they can't expect the, you know, on a Tuesday when most people are at work, you can't expect. No, you know, no, no. Uh, they're probably going to do it like night to night. It'll probably oh, be interesting. like, it'll, it'll probably be like part one at seven o'clock Tuesday night. Part two, seven o'clock Wednesday night, and then they reset. As my that, that would be my assumption. I, I don't know how they do it in New I'm York. Very curious. Very you curious. know, we started as an award show, and we're ending as yeah, a, a Broadway, Broadway show. show. And a one, <laughs> and a two, and a. Dude, I could be the resident Broadway reviewer. I go to Broadway multiple times a year. I just saw the Please. Danny DeVito show. Um, so I'm. You guys ever want Broadway reviews? Hit me up. Wait, they have a show about Danny DeVito. No, I went and saw Danny DeVito and his daughter on Broadway in a show called I Need That. Uh, he plays like a, a hoarder um, who basically like it was amazing. It was like oh, so it's cool a great to watch him watch him act in front of me. He's a I'm great a, actor. A, yeah. Yeah. He's amazing. All right. Well, we're going to wrap up this week's show with a new segment. Well, and every once in a while segment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. End of the year. Uh, Gabe, why don't you explain to the people what this or that top fives is going to be? Yes. OK, so every year this or that is a game that we've played on the premium. You can still sign up for that and go listen to episodes Real if you want. Premium. The uh, I think this or that is kind of a commonly known sort of thing. We pit two things. You have to pick this or that, but you only get those choices. Um, but every year for the past few years now, Listener of the show, friend of the show, uh, Michael Kamens writes in and I gives us. Yes, he puts in uh, last year. He typically does last year's top 10 with I think it was the year prior is what he used to do. So it'd be like the last two years, if I'm not mistaken. This year, we're doing things a little differently. And we have your top fives from 2022. And I will pit them against your top fives from 2017, which is the first time we did this. And at the time, we only did top fives. Um, and it goes like this. If I say uh, your number whatever was 
this film in 2022, then your number whatever was this film in 2017, and then now I just throw it at you and you have to, off the top of your head, uh, pick which one that you kill and which one you keep. And you, I guess you make a super top five list. And it's killed dead forever. Doesn't no, exist. No, no one can ever no, watch it. it ever again. Just, aliens come and then you give it to them and then they take off. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just a, a, a one A and a one B for each. All for right. Each, fair enough. Time. No, I like, I like Sean. See if our tastes have changed. No, uh, I like Sean will kick, will kick, kick things off with you. In 2022, <laughs> you first. In, in 2022, your number five was emergency. Which Ooh. is fitting because your number five in 2017 was Mother with an exclamation point. <laughs> oh, I'm going Mother. Mother? By the greatest nice. director on the planet. That's Mr. Uh, fair Mr. enough. Mr. Terry Spielberg Potter didn't direct Mother. Mother. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still it's thinking Mother. Did. That movie is super disturbing, but is phenomenal still. It's I'm grown on it. me. I will say that. I will say Train? that. Train? Interesting. All right, Jake, we'll go to you. Yep. That was quick. That was easy. I think it's going to get harder as we get as we get further up the list. Probably. Your number five in 2022 was X. Great movie. Oh, yeah. Your number five in 2017 was War for the Planet of the Apes. Ooh. Oh, intriguing. Uh, I'm going to go X. I just, I love X-Men. that. I mean, look, I got a soft spot for the horror genre, obviously. And that movie is a love letter to everything that I love about the horror genre and all the types. I mean, dude, the opening shot is a yeah. fabricated four by three shooting through barn doors and then He's pushes sick. through the barn doors so that the aspect ratio sort of organically changed. Like, it's, like it's good. I cannot begin to, I almost screamed out Kevin McCarthy whenever I saw that <laughs> shot. <laughs> well, the best part, what I love about that, we listened to our interview uh, with Ty West and he talked about they, he didn't know what he was going to open the yeah, film with until they got right, there. I forgot about that. He didn't yeah. know what the opening shot was going to be. And then he was like, well, well, let's do this. And it's like, yeah, sometimes you just, you have to be yeah. in the physical space. Um, all right, Kevin, your number mm. fives. In 2022, surprisingly, I think, um, a gasp from everyone on the on this panel. Your number five was Top Gun Maverick. Hey, mm. too yeah, low. I'm, damn, damn right. What, 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 was, what, what was my? Oh, we're going to go through. We're going to go okay, through cool. it. Okay. Uh, in 2017, your number five was Logan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. oh wow. Kevin likes yes. to get spicy. Oh, if you're a fan of the that, premium, uh, that hurts my soul. Wow. Those so, two movies right. are very similar. Legacy are you going to kill Wolverine again? Again? Um, wow. That's a really tough one. Um, it is. Listen, as much as I love Mangold's Logan, um, I've rewatched Top Gun Maverick more times. Um, I think I also just have a love for that film because of the practicality of it. Um, the way it was shot, the way the, the way that Tom Cruise and Kaczynski allow audiences to be smart and bring them into the filmmaking process and into the world of the movie. Not that Mangold doesn't do that, but there was just something special about Maverick that hit on a sure. level that it's hard to it's hard to explain. Um, uh, the Gaga song is one of my favorite songs in a movie in a long time. I love that that was interweaved into the score. So I'm going to go with Maverick. Um, Top Gun but Maverick. that's a tough one. I mean, I, sure. I, I Top love Logan. Gun Maverick. Yeah. Let's move on to number fours. Sean. Your number four oh. last year was Glass Onion. Oh, mm. love the Glass Onion. In 2017, your number four was Good Time. Oh, that's fantastic. I gotta go with Good Time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the right call. That's yeah, the that's right call. Yeah. I mean, that's culturally... It did, well, you know, it's interesting, like, Good Time, I think, in our circles... <laughs> Has cultural impact. I'm not quite sure how many people know it outside, but what I'll say to, to Good Times credit, though, I, you might be right in its exposure, but anyone I recommend it to has a great time. Well, hey, no pun intended. Has a, <laughs> has a great time. Has a great time watching it, um, and so I, it has like a mass appeal quality sure. to it. I just think just not enough people. Yeah. Well, and also like Good Time walked so that Uncut Gems could run. Mm-hmm. Well, so Uncut Gems could. Could sprint, inject <laughs> yeah. cocaine right into his veins, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and burst through a wall movie. like the Kool Aid Man. Uh, yeah, I got to pick good time. Good time. I, that's, I think that's a great pick, uh, Jake. Great movie. Your number fours in 2022. Your number four was the Banshees of Inisherin. Mm-hmm. Ew. Great Ew. movie. Great movie. You didn't like that one? Yeah, no, I don't care uh, for that one at all. Banshees is great. It's the Wonka of its time. Stupid. Uh, you, that just, if you were just, oh, uh, there goes that dream. That line alone. <laughs> there you go, yeah, like, there goes that dream. Top five. Uh, versus, like Barry Keegan. 
I have a problem with Barry Keegan. Keegan or Keegan? It's probably because you pronounce his last name Keegan. Ke- Keogan. What? How is it pronounced? Keogan. 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 Nah, I'm not gonna do that. You can tell because there's an O there. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> That's, what I call him. That's what I call him, George. More like Keenogan. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, Jake. Is it Banshees or in 2017? Your number four, The Post. Mm. Oh, that's, that's a no-brainer. Mm. Well, for Sean, who doesn't like one of these movies. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I think I gotta go Banshees. You're yeah. nuts. Yeah, no, I gotta go. That's, I think I, I might pick go. Banshees. It's maybe a little Banshees. recency bias. Just, just the the sharpness of the script. What it what you look and don't look. I mean, we're talking when it comes to the post. It's clearly my number. It's gonna be weird. This is one of those things where like we're, I feel like we're gonna have to defend the one that yeah. we don't choose, even though it's like number four on my like a Spielberg movie starring Tom Hanks about the importance yeah. of journalists. Like yep. yes, like that's you know. But would you the, say? Would you say that Banshees is a more sort of uh, a more original and a special? Movie more t- yeah, special, but a movie more told in its subtext. Yes. Whereas the post is there, it is mega, mega stars yeah. at the top of the game. Yeah, doing a story that is familiar. Sure. You know what I mean? Like I, sure. that's where I would separate. Yeah, if I were to have to pick. But. Yeah, and also the post was, which is weird to say, uh, because it's set in the seventies, but like a movie of the. Mo- it was very much a movie that was the result of yeah. what was happening in the country at that time. Kevin, your number four. Yes. Is quite similarly, last year, your number four was the Banshees of Inisherin. Yeah, my man. But will the Banshees of Anna Sheeran take down your 2017 number four, The Shape of Water? Oh, oh wow. Um, <laughs> this is an easy pick for me, but yeah, it's damn. an easy pick for me, too. Um, two great films. Wow. Two amazing films. Like, yeah, like, of like, course. like I, I wouldn't even know where to, to begin to, to, to talk negatively about either in terms no, of no, having, no, no. Cho- These are having top to choose. No, no. Yeah. Um, Okay, I found Banshees to be more enjoyable. Um, really? Shape of Water is... I mean, they're both dark films. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think it's interesting. I like the filmmaking. I, I, when I look at Shape of Water, I, I'm, I'm more impressed by the filmmaking. When I look at Banshees, I'm more impressed by the script and the performances. Interesting. Um, honestly, I'm probably going to go with Shape of Water <sighs> only because... I remember, and again, this is on a personal note. Um, sure. I love that film, but I remember interviewing Gamma del Toro for that and learning about the intricacies of how someone would shoot dry for wet mm. um, and, and shooting a dry environment and, and giving it the, the, the look of it being underwater with smoke and things like that. And I remember that being a very pivotal moment in my mind about learning about filmmaking. And I think that film just kind of holds a special place in my heart about like re not reigniting, but re- reminding me why I, I do what sure. I do for a living. It was. And so I think shape of water just is a more pivotal film for me personally, but I love both. On that note, we are going to take a break and we'll be right back with your top threes from either year. All right, we are back and we're picking back up with our top threes from 2022 and 2017. And Sean, your number three from last year is Babylon. Ooh. Going up against The Shape of Water. Your number three from 2017. I'm going to pick Babylon. Yeah. That's, that's the right call. Yeah. That's the I'm right pick Babylon. Call. I don't understand why people don't like that movie. I it's don't, a masterpiece. I don't get it. It's they will. So they will. Give wonderful. it time. Give it 20 years. Oh my years. God. I, mean, I, I guess it's, it's in, your, in your face and, and you know... It's brilliant. It's a huge swing after huge swing, but God almighty, the you know, craft in that film. You know what's interesting about these two being head to head and why for me, it's not as, as simple. It wouldn't be as simple as picking Babylon, which I love. I love both of these movies. To me, the shape of water is movie magic. Like to me, the story, the way that it's able to, uh, you know, uh, the movie making, of course, the literal magic, sure. But the way that it's this love story and that it's it's the creature from the Black Lagoon and being able to fall in love and and how that's a metaphor for all of this. And you as an audience member can fall in love with this very, you know, at the time that year, people were like, oh, is that the is that the movie with the fish sex? You know, like you can like Mm. you can you can sort of explain it away out of context. But in the context of its movie, it captures you and you can fall in love with this unlikely couple. And to me, that is movie magic. And Babylon 
is about explaining where movie magic comes from right. and, and and the origin of that and celebrating movie magic. And so I find that very uh, that interesting, interesting that those yeah. landed together. That um, one's probably my favorite Chazelle movie now after because it was first wow. man. But I just man, that I one know. is so thrilling, man. Like there's like well, the, not let alone the montage at the yeah. end and shameless plug to our interview oh, with God. Damien Chazelle. Uh, one of our favorite interviews we've had on our show was that was for Babylon. It was so funny. Um, but that ending, like I think about that sequence a lot. It's like incredible. you know, there's like a whole there's a whole trend on TikTok now. Everyone's asking people like, "What do you think of the Roman Empire?" Or whatever whatever that is. I don't know. It's some TikTok trend. I want people to be like. What do you think of the ending of Babylon? That's what I, I just want to hear everybody's response to that, because like yeah. that I think about that all the time. <laughs> well, I think about that ending constantly. Today, yeah. I would choose Babylon. I'm not saying that yeah. it's the, the right choice, but today I would choose Babylon. Whiplash uh, gets its its hat in the ring because it is perfect. Yeah. Like, Whiplash is my favorite Chazelle film. It's, that's what I just said. It's, it's, it is a perfect movie. Yeah. It's Whereas so Babylon, I'm not, not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's oh. a masterpiece. It's like a magnum opus type movie, whereas Whiplash gets the benefit of being just a movie you could watch on repeat, and it's it's always exciting. Um, number three for Jake, last year, 2022, your number three was Avatar, The Way of Water. Hmm. In 2017, it was Christopher Nolan, The Way of Water, a.k.a. Dunkirk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta go. I gotta go. Dunkirk on that. Dunkirk. Uh, I look. I I love. I still. You know. At my my love of Avatar: The Way of Water is sort of uh, you know exemplified by the fact that I, I don't particularly care for the first Avatar. I've, I've been. I've said that a lot on record, uh, which makes the fact that I loved the sequel all the more special. Um, but Dunkirk is just. You know. It's it's. Uh, though, though, so is the way of water. I was going to say masterpiece at, to, at top filmmaking, but a different kind of uh, filmmaking yeah. uh, process. But both of them are, are are astonishing in their own way. But um, just Dunkirk is just, and you know, and I and I would have loved to have said Avatar: The Way of Water just to literally watch Kevin's head explode. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's but you know why? The, the, those words would never be able to come out of your mouth. It's just not true. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not true. All right, let's go with uh, Kevin. Your number three for 2022 was the whale. And weirdly enough, my number three from from uh, 2017 was actually Oppenheimer. No, go go go. go. Yeah. yeah, your number three from 2017 was in fact Blade Runner 2049. Oh, okay, that's easy. Um, easy. I love the whale. I'm proud of where it is on my list. Blade Runner 2049. Hot take. I don't care what anyone says. It's better than Ridley Scott's movie. I, I find 2049 to be one of the most incredible sequels I, I, that I've ever seen. And, I, and, and, and I've discussed this in the show before. I find that people underrate sequels a lot. If you actually look through the history of movies, there are dozens of sequels that could be considered better than the originals. Like I feel like what happened with that film, and I'll, uh, and I'll end on this is that Denis saw that as a kid mm -hmm. and I think something happened in his mind and I think he was meant to make the film all those years later he knew exactly what he was doing it's completely in his voice but yet completely beautifully true to what Sir Ridley Scott did and I know Ridley Scott from what I've read I've seen quotes that maybe I don't know if he was super impressed with it. I have no idea um but I genuinely think that it's one of the best sequels of all time and it should have been it should be talked about more. And I hope one day people find it more. I know it did well or didn't do extremely well, but the first one didn't do hardly anything and became a classic. So mm -hmm. um, I think as the knee goes on with his filmmaking, I think that people will start to go back and refine stuff. And um, I, just, I just had a yeah. hot take. I'm not even going to say this hot take I had in my head. Because one, one, I don't know that I believe it. It's top of mind. And also, Go ahead. nah, we, we won't be able to. No, we no, give the, we'll just say it. And, and then we won't we, recover. Then, we won't recover. Let's go no, to number two. Well, no, let me think you, on you, it. Let me think you, on you it. You well, can't just say I'll that. I'll come back okay, to it. Just I'll drop the bomb and then walk away. Just drop it. Uh, I think I might be more excited about Denis than Christopher Nolan. Sean, you're number two. <laughs> no, no, honestly, that's totally fine. I'm, yeah, I'm I, no problem with that. Yeah, yeah, that's no, fine. no, no, no. Denis is amazing. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, he's up there for me. Um, I love how fast he said it, though. That's yeah, why I was yeah, laughing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> number two, Sean, in 2022, okay. is everything everywhere all at once? Oof. Mm. Or <laughs> your number two of 2017, Logan? Ooh. Oh, everything everywhere all at once. Yeah. Yeah, and I hate to, I mean, just in terms of put, putting those two against each other, um, one is a traditional meat and potatoes, you know, 
comic book western, but everything everywhere all at once. Done is, exquisitely. You're number Logan's two. Logan's not traditional. <laughs> Logan's not a traditional comic book film. In this sense, the story that it tells isn't as boundary pushing as sure, the right. story being told in everything everywhere all at once. Oh, I get it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's traditional in the sense that it's a farewell to a character, you know, who's been around for a really long time. He's he's aging, he's potentially dying, you know, and he sees a young kid. You know, how many times have we seen the old hero young kid story play itself out? Do you know what's weird, Sean? I don't even consider Logan a superhero movie. Yeah. Well, well that's I mean, like, part of its to brilliance. Me, Wolverine is just is, is such a superhero character. Mm -hmm. He is, you but know? Logan I it's, it's so weird. I actually in my head, Logan is in a in the drama department. OK, <laughs> it's not yeah. even in the superhero department. And I, I almost feel the same way about Dark Knight. Um, Dark Knight, maybe see, a little more. That, that goes into my, my, my horror thing, whenever like I get frustrated, whenever like a horror is, uh, you know, a, a really high class horror film and people say, no, it's a thriller. I'm like, no, it's a it's a horror. But it can just horror. That's what horror can be in the same way that like that's what superhero movies can be. But, but, like, but, to, but like, to me, point, Logan but, and Dark Knight are superhero movies. That's just an example of of how high they can go. But you so really consider Logan a superhero yes, movie? It absolutely is. Yes. And so it's I mean, it's, it's, so it's super so like, to, to, to remove it from the, the I genre. Don't see that. It, 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 that's, I, I hate when people do that with horror, too. Like when it, it crosses a threshold, it's not allowed to be that genre uh, anymore. No, it's I, not really an argument, a, though, right? I mean, a superhero movie just has superheroes in it. It has superheroes in it. They I use superpowers. Can, I don't know. I, for, I, sorry, for me, no, no. I find Logan to be a drama. I don't consider that a superhero movie. Well, it can I really be both. Don't. I mean, I think I, it's I mean, honestly it's both. both. I know, yeah. but I, I don't think it's a super. Like, like if you were to put a list, I think. Together, that, I think to Jake's point, though, then you're putting superhero movies in a box that doesn't exist. No, and it's fine I mean, if you. I mean, like it's, I, by like definition, it's you because like Avengers is different than Logan. I know, yes, but and they're, they're both superhero, they're movies. superhero movies. But it's let me like ask a question, Kev. If somebody made a list of the best superhero movies of all time and didn't put The Dark Knight on it, would you? think that it was no i mean i i know that it would end up on a list like that but i i, I think you guys are missing what i'm saying the point i'm saying is in my mind yeah. logan i don't consider logan a superhero film i'm not saying that it isn't i'm just saying that like if i'm looking at mangold's like filmography i consider logan to be as good of a drama or as good of a, a story in terms of drama storytelling as 310 to yuma uh sure. as as throw sure. off the line i i don't I feel like Logan is closer to 310 to Yuma than it is to the Avengers. That's why it, yeah, yeah, Kevin, but in that's my why, mind, yes, that's Kevin, all. Kevin, but that's why it's in all of your top fives. Like, yes, I know, I, I'm not arguing that it's not technically not a superhero film. I'm saying mm -hmm. how I, how I view it in my mind. I, sure. I just don't, it just doesn't register like in my head, superhero films register differently than Logan. The, okay. uh, the dark Knight, I, I, I could, that teeters the line more. I Logan, would, I feel like it's full Western. Drama. As we discuss Logan in this, I find myself taking a few points off of it because Jackman's coming back. I as fun, I actually had he's a thought. Playing a different, uh, he's playing a different. You can't you can't Logan, do that to though. Logan. You can't do that yeah, to Logan. Fair. You, yeah, you got you got to think. Uh, you fair. know. The, to, the, wait, can, can I can I move forward and predict that because my isn't my are my number twos the same? I, I'm going to give this to you as well, but I just want to finish this point. That's like saying you don't like Jurassic Park anymore because Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom kind of sucked, <laughs> right? Or like, <laughs> like, or you're bl or you're blaming a movie's quality because the trailer was terrible. It does. I will like say that. it like, does deflate what it meant at the time. I do. That's agree what with I'm you saying. That. But it's Jurassic not, but different. Park Jurassic Park wasn't set up to be the launch of a franchise. This was this was designated to be the farewell to a character. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It was. It was. A, it is. Well, he's he's going to get somebody else. It's a I'm different it's a different Wolverine that he's going to get on. On this note, though, Jake, you have the exact same question. Everything yeah. everywhere all at once was your number two last year yeah. versus Logan. Your number two of twenty seventeen. Uh, for me, it's Logan. I mean, Logan nice. is genuinely a, it's a great uh, drama. I, it's not, I think <laughs> it if, really if I had to do a, a list of the top five superhero movies of all time, it would easily be on there. It would. Um, I really do think, and I'm not being facetious, I think that Sir Patrick Stewart deserved an Oscar nomination for his uh, performance yeah. as Professor X. I just thought yes, it was he did. incredible. Um, you know, great yeah, dramatic it's, performance. It's, it's Shane, Jesus Christ. You, uh, it's Kevin, Shane, are you talking about his performance where he held his finger to his head and he stopped time? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> and he, uh, he, he just accidentally <laughs> killed all the other X-Men. Wait, he's <laughs> everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. everywhere. Thing. Is everything ever all at once a superhero movie? It's yeah. a riff on a super. I mean, it's commentary but on superhero movies. It but carries but, my superpowers. 
I don't is everything know, like, ever you're trying to make, Kev? We, ag- we all no. understand that you're putting it into different box, but that has nothing to do with what box it's no, actually but The of. argument you just made was that uh, you're joking about the, the characters having superpowers and him right. putting his finger up to his thing, Okay, but, uh, to his uh, head, is, but, but that was up against, hang on, Kev, that was a joke up against your argument that because there's dramatic elements to a movie, it's now only a s- drama. Exactly, I and I that. didn't say, exactly, and okay. I didn't say the okay. other thing. All right, all right, fair, fair, fair. All right. Uh, Jake, you said you hate. You said you hate Logan. Sorry, <laughs> he hates everything. Everyone wants. No, you said Logan's a romance. I love. What? I love uh, Logan. Um, and uh, you know the the image of her picking up the the cross oh. and turning it into the X mm. is forever chiseled into the great cinematic images of my mind. Nice. Do you think? Uh, you think that Ryan Reynolds is going to go pick up that X and drag him out? Oh, God, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I hope dude. to God. It's, that movie better start at that scene. Dude, look at also, the, you know, one of the things I always loved about Logan is this whole idea of like comic books existing in that universe. Like him flipping through the X-Men yeah, and so going good. like some of it happened, but not like this. Like yeah, I always, sure always right. love that. Should have put the Didn't suit Ryan Reynolds on. already do that at the opening of Deadpool 2? He yeah, has the, that, there's the, the, he toy. Has the toy of him. Yeah, that he... That he yeah. turns and um, it starts playing music. All right, we're gonna we're gonna pick up the pace. I want to get to you guys as number ones. Um, this will be a similar conversation here, but but Kevin, your number twos are everything, everywhere, all at once. This is why it was our movie of the year. It was everyone's number two um, versus Get Out. Ooh. Oh, oh, get Out, no question. Yeah, I mean, those are two. Again, I want to reiterate this for anyone at home that might be internet minded at the moment. Two incredible films oh. that are very special. But yeah, Get yeah. Out is get out as has that expect. Well, as we've re- reminded you multiple times, these are the these are the films that were on our lists, and yeah. these were my number twos of each year. So clearly, I have I'm surprised regard. Get Out was your number two. It's just oh, strange well, I know what pitting your number them. one is. Yeah. I know what your yeah, number we'll one get there. is. It's okay. just strange pitting them against each other. You know, because yeah. they, Welcome they to play the game, Sean. differently. I know. No, I understand. I do. I do want to say one thing about Get Out. I, I the reason why I would choose Get Out is because I think it's one of the greatest scripts ever written. I really think it's. I, I think the script didn't it win is, a screenplay. Didn't it win like? Yes. Didn't win like a of the like it, of this millennium yeah it is genuinely like a perfect script like and and it's a film that gets better every single time i watch it to be honest with you like it's it's probably one of the greatest films i've ever seen you I mean, know it's cannot, a better script and i don't can't believe i'm doing this but oppenheimer is a better script i think i would disagree with that really? I, I love oppenheimer but i and i love chris nolan as a writer i think that um, oppenheimer script is insane it's remarkable. I mean, it's, it's a great script. I mean, That's you're insane. talking to guys about 12 times, but get out. I think is, I, I think the nuance and subtlety of that script, it is Jordan Peele is just a, Oh, what a powerhouse filmmaker. I mean, I think about Nope all the time. That movie. Oh, anyways, continue. We'll come back to Nope. Um, okay. On to our number, number ones. ones. Sean, your number one of last year was Top Gun Maverick. Ooh. And you're putting it up against 2017's The Post. Oh, it's Maverick. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Damn. Would you now I want to ask you this. Do you still think that's your number one movie of that year if you were to go back? No, probably not. I think Uh, you all you all might have some sort of read me the top five. What are my top five real quick from 2017? Mother. Good yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> it does have an exclamation point on it. I'm just trying to pay respect to the artist. Okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does have an exclamation point. Uh, <laughs> good time. The Shape of Water, Logan, yeah. and then the post. And I do have your six through ten. I actually have yours, Sean, if you want to know them. But um, Of those five, the mm-hmm. post is still my favorite of those five, to be honest with you. You're, you know I, your number... Sorry, but yes. I wouldn't put but I wouldn't put the post above um what was the one I was putting against? Oh uh, Maverick? Maverick? No. Post is still number one for you, sorry. You said. Um of those. The post would still be number one for me of those five. Of the five from 2017. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's not I but I like Maverick more can than. Can I, I like just post. while we're here, because I like that, can I give your six through ten from 2017 just sure. to see if it yeah. shifts? Yeah. Okay, starting from ten, you have it chapter one. Ooh, I love Ooh, that. That's Baby great. Driver. Oh God, that's a great movie. Wind River. Uh, no. I like Wind River a lot. It's very yeah. good. Coco. Oh, and yeah, then at number six, Coco. at number six, the Florida Project. Does any of that break into your top five? I, I would. I feel like I'd almost no. I wouldn't switch all of them, but like most of those would move up. Yeah. And I feel like films like Shape of Water might move down. Good time might even now. Good time is probably good where it good is. Good time's pretty great. Yeah. 
But the post, I love the post. Yeah, uh, yeah I for, remember you loving it. Yeah, for so many of the reasons that Jake was talking about earlier, like it, all of those performances are so calibrated. Like Meryl Streep is brilliant in that film. Tom Hanks is brilliant in it. Carrie Coon is fantastic. Uh, mm. uh, fucking who's better call Saul? <laughs> Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk, Odenkirk, Odenkirk is Odenkirk. tremendous in that movie. Like everyone's great. Hanks is incredible. Uh, like yeah. the only thing that uh, that bothers me a bit about the post is the washed out uh, cinematography, which of course I know is you know Kaminsky. Man, it, it looks that's like his a, design. I it looks like that. a newspaper. It's awesome. I, it yeah. does. Um, but that script is incredible. Uh, I'm not even quite sure who. Oh, that was Liz Hanna. That's Liz Hanna who wrote yeah. the post. Uh, she's really smart and and a really great screenwriter. Um, but all that being said, as much as I do love the post, um, Top Gun Maverick is Top Gun Maverick. I mean, what are we Pretty talking good. about here? Jesus. Yeah. I mean, that's that. Movie I will be curious. Right I will be curious. And uh, not that I predict this for Top Gun Maverick, but that is one where I'd be curious when you have the same amount of distance. from yeah. Maverick as you do the post. How that might how that might change oh i don't know if it's going to change all that much i just i think it does everything right i think it, it everything does, it yeah. sets out to do it does right so great movie uh yeah. jake your number ones last year top gun maverick versus blade runner 2049 Ooh. <laughs> two <laughs> incredible <laughs> legacy sequels <laughs> that uh matched That's if true. not surpassed their originals yeah uh uh, I got. I got to go. Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Hell yeah, that's where I would go. Um, now, li- now listen. Here's the, here's the thing. I saw Top Gun Maverick in theaters more times than I've probably seen twenty forty nine in total in my yeah. life. But what Denny did with that is just. I mean, it's such a like a cliche, but it's just like you look at the screen and just go, oh, like fucking yeah. art. Like it's <laughs> art. Like it's just unbelievable and 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 blade runner ridley scott's original is one of my all-time favorite films and so to to experience one not just the, the fact that a sequel exists anyway but that it, it matches and there are days where like kevin i convince myself is better than his original it's just uh i'll never forget um walking uh with gosling into my studio he came into my studio a couple years back and and we were just kind of just shooting the shit and i just said hey man like blade runner 2049 was my favorite film of the year was my number one when it came out and he goes ah you're the one that liked it and that forever just like broke my heart because like i really i I know he was joking but like i really hope he realizes how good because i know it didn't do great at the box office but and so I just I mad. really need him which is to kind of the perfect way for that, that to go for a yeah, Blade exactly. Runner movie, <laughs> especially considering how the fact that like Blade Runner didn't do all that great either. You really did um, live up to the expectation yeah. of Ridley Scott. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, I I hate to not choose Top Gun Maverick considering how much I loved that movie and how happy one I was one to be. Yeah, yeah, one A, one yeah. B. You know who else um, who probably didn't like Blade Runner twenty forty nine is Ridley Scott. <laughs> Ridley Scott. <laughs> I bet you Ridley's down on that movie. I think Has he commented, commented on it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he said. I think he said it was too long. Um, <laughs> which is hilarious that feels you know what that feels like that feels God like Ridley him. Scott making a joke because he yeah. makes four hour director's cuts like. All right, I'm, I'm gonna read his quote this is from <laughs> Entertainment Weekly it says it was effing way too long <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's only, it sounds pretty accurate yeah, yeah. That's that's that. yeah. yeah. next time he's on the show we should ask him about that and, yeah. I, bet, I bet Denis loved that I bet he no, loved it we should interview Ridley Scott next time but pretend he's the one who made 2049 and that's the whole bit just ask questions about it the whole movie and see when he catches on <laughs> um, 2022 your number one film was Nope and in for Kevin and in versus mm. 2017's Three oh billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Your number. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dunkirk. Wow. <laughs> Good luck. Nope or Dunkirk. Oh, man. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the game. Both shot by Hoytema. Wow. That is. <laughs> oh, my God. This, this is the sequel to Sophie's Choice. We never knew we wanted. <laughs> you, just, you just broke me. Um, <laughs> just go with your gut. You got to just go with your gut. We can I go mean, with. I, I, feel like I, I mean, I mean, it's got to be. Listen, listen. I, I feel like everyone knows my answer is going to be Dunkirk, and okay. I, I, yeah. it, it, but it Two has to movies. be because. But I also saw Dunkirk six times in theaters. Sure. So I saw it in multiple cities. I saw it in Toronto and L.A. and D.C. and New York, and I just, I just went all. I toured basically to see it in as many IMAX theaters as I could. 
Um, I talk about it a lot on the show. It's obviously right above my head right now. We used to now. sign off. We used to um, sign off the show. Sign off with it. Um, but I do. I, I, I do for twenty seconds. Just want to explain that I, I. Nope is an extraordinary film that I hope becomes a favorite down the line that's the, for that's audiences. The sequel, Kevin. Yeah, I, I just I, I I really love Nope, and I'm so happy that that to look at my lists and have the, have have had that at number one and have Dunkirk at number one from 2017. Um, I, t- I think about Nope a lot more than I think about Dunkirk. Could be a recency thing. Um, sure. Nope really changed the way I look at media. Um, it, it, it's, in, it's affected my questions as a journalist. Like I bring up Nope as talking points to actors because I think it's a fascinating uh, study about our obsession with spectacle and the way we are our, our relationship with disturbing content and why we're so obsessed with it. Um, Hard to bring that up to the Hunger Games cast. That was a good point. Yeah. And I think (laughs) I think it's really that movie altered my mindset about the way I view the world. Dunkirk is a history film that also changed my perspective on things. Um, But I don't know that it had a lasting impact emotionally on how I live my life going forward. That's what I I have to go with Dunkirk because it was the movie that I saw so many times. And it's one of my favorite films of all time. But I have to. Give a little weight to Nope and how important. That I mean, it's film two was number ones me. again. Yeah, yeah. Ones. they're remarkable <laughs> achievements. Both. Of All them. right, Sean, I'm yeah. done with my fun game that I make you guys play. So I want to thank Michael Kamens for taking the time to put all that, that together great. because yeah. that's, you, a, that's a lot of fun to go back and revisit those and realize where we might stuff have been. Like that. Yeah, that's great because I'll tell you what, I don't think about my lists. I have no idea what I put down for different things. So um, we are going to bring this one to a close. Your call to action to head to the comments down below. In honor of Wonka hitting theaters, tell us which pop culture character uh, you would like to see the origin story for. Give us some ideas of potential. Uh, Dude, they did that already. I know. That no. nine times. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> they just keep doing it. They tried. Uh, in the meantime, follow us on social media. Jake is at Jake's Takes. Kevin is at Kevin McCarthy TV. I am at Sean underscore O'Connell. Gabe is at Gabe Kovach. And the show is at Real Blend. We'll be back to you guys next week, where I think we're doing our top tens, which is a very fun episode to tune I into. I gotta watch some plan. movie films. That's the plan. I, that's I need to plan. see Oppenheimer. That's the, that's the last oh, one I need to see. Jesus Christ. All Skip right. it. Well, <laughs> <next> week. Dunkirk. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't actually seen it yet. Yeah.